In a previous video, I had you guys vote on my next project. And as you can probably tell from the title of this video, the winner is the Laser Sniper Rifle. Now this is certainly not the first laser gun that I have produced. But this is a lot different than anything else that I've made, because to put it quite simply, I was going more for beam quality here than just raw output power. If you're subscribed to my channel, you've probably seen videos of my laser shotgun and laser bazooka. Now don't get me wrong, these things were stupidly powerful, among the strongest portable lasers ever built by hobbyists. But if you notice in these videos, I'm only burning things that are up close to the laser there. And that's because the beam quality on these things were terrible, to be honest. And uh, the main source of this terrible beam is the fact that the uh, main beam was made up from multiple smaller lasers. Here I have a 50 watt blue laser diode array that's similar to one of the ones that I had on my laser bazooka. Now this huge beam is actually made up of 24 smaller laser beams, all stacked up on top of each other with mirrors in a design that's called a knife edging array. Now if I crank back the power here, you can see the individual beams that make up the main beam. Even if you try to tame this output with a lens, it's actually impossible to make all the beams converge to a point. And among other issues, the large apparent area of the light source puts an upper bound on how much power density you can get in the beam, even using a lens, so this means less destruction downrange. Now you'll even see these effects in single beam lasers. So here I have two diode lasers, one's 1 watt violet and the other one's 6 watts of blue. Now up close, the blue laser is going to be a better burner because it has higher power density there. But I currently have these lasers focused so that their beam is smallest when it's far away from the laser. In this case, the violet laser is coming from a single spatial mode laser diode, so that means it has a much smaller emitting area. So when you're far away from the laser, that means it can keep a much tighter beam and therefore have a higher power density. So even though the blue laser is six times stronger, the violet laser is much better at burning things out at this distance. But once I'm out past, say, 30 feet or so, the beam is spread out so much that it's too weak to burn anything. Now when it comes to building a laser that can burn things far away, clearly it helps to have a small emitter size, at least when working with diode lasers. But even if I were to compress that emitter down to a zero dimensional point in space, the beam would still spread out. Because in fact it's impossible to keep a laser beam going perfectly straight through space. So clearly we need some other methods to keep that beam tight when it's far away from the source. Here I have a chart of the minimum possible beam angle you can get for a given aperture size and wavelength. Now constant wavelengths are plotted on these slanted lines here. Then you have your uh, angles here and then your aperture sizes. Now these are based off of the uh, Rally criterion. The Rally criterion is a formula that gives you a minimum possible beam angle for a given wavelength and aperture size. And the big takeaway from this is that you can keep your beam tighter over a distance if you use either a smaller wavelength source or a larger aperture. All right, on to the actual construction of the gun. So I decided to use a 1 watt 405 nanometer laser diode because not only is it the uh, highest power single mode laser diode available to me, it's also a very short wavelength, so it kills two birds with one stone there. I tore down an old airsoft gun, gutted all the parts inside, and then stuck in that 1 watt laser as well as wired a switch to the trigger. But this setup alone isn't going to be burning anything past say like 30 feet or so. The beam is just too small when it's coming out of the laser. In fact, I need a much bigger beam in order to keep it tighter over a distance. But wait a minute, didn't I just say that a smaller light source is better for keeping a tight beam? And this is why science is hard. In the horrific and borderline satanic derivation of this rally criterion, it's assumed that the light source is coming from a point, and then it's diffracting through a circular aperture. I already have a small light source and short wavelength, so the last piece to optimize is the aperture size. Now the equivalent of a large aperture in the rally criterion is just a wide laser beam leaving the gun. Widening a laser beam is not that difficult of a task. In fact, I get to use technology developed by Galileo himself for this. The Galilean telescope uses two lenses to magnify distant objects, and was one of the greatest inventions of physics and astronomy. If you flip it around and shoot a laser through it, it acts as a very simple way to expand a laser beam and decrease its divergence. I got a bunch of lenses from ESCO Optics to experiment with different beam expander combinations. In fact, I built this simple little telescope that magnifies 2.5x. Step aside, NASA. I tried a couple telescope designs for the laser rifle, with both designs using PVC fittings for the barrel. Now this one uses a small lens in front of the laser diode to capture the quickly diverging laser light, then a large lens sits at the end of the barrel to collimate the now wide laser beam. Now by using a threaded mount like you see here, I can change the distance between the two lenses, which then allows me to adjust the distance downrange that will receive the most damage. A short and stubby telescope like this with just two lenses is prone to something called spherical aberration. And this would prevent the laser from focusing down to a small point for burning purposes. 
Now, a longer telescope or a multiple lens system can mitigate this, but I cheated around this a bit by using aspheric lenses from Esco Optics. I wanted to keep the lens count to a minimum as my PVC mounting system is less than ideal. The beam on this laser is surprisingly dim for how powerful it is, but the 405 nanometer wavelength is close to ultraviolet and therefore on the very edge of human visibility. Now this dim beam makes this laser especially dangerous because it can still blind in a fraction of a second even though it isn't very bright. Alright, it's time to test out this thing's destructive capabilities. So I started by putting some balloons on the tree about 30 feet away from me. Now 30 feet is about the max distance that you can expect to burn with a handheld laser. And as you can tell, it did a pretty good job here. Next I wanted to double the distance. So I adjusted the focus so the beam was smallest at about 60 feet away from me. But I ran into a problem here. I could not get the laser to pop the balloon. Now this was really disappointing to me because I was expecting this laser to burn much past 60 feet. So I walked up to the dot and, uh, just to see how small it was, and it was definitely small enough to inflict some damage. But it turns out the problem was actually with me. I just couldn't hold the laser still enough to pop the balloon. Now when shooting a real gun, even if you're a little bit wobbly, as long as your sights are lined up perfectly right as you hit that trigger, you're going to hit the target just fine. Oh yeah! But the laser gun does not work instantaneously. And in fact, it needs enough time where the laser is stable, so that the material absorbs enough energy until it heats up to the point where it either melts or catches on fire. This means that the laser sniper rifle needs to be very still in order to work. I ended up mounting it to a tripod to increase its stability. Let's give that another go with the added tripod. Much better. I stuck another balloon in the tree and moved the laser gun back to about 100 feet from the balloon. At this distance, it becomes quite difficult to get the focus on the laser set correctly. But even so, I was able to pull off the shot. Can it possibly work at 150 feet? Now even with this tripod, I still cannot keep the laser still enough. So I ended up sticking a clamp on the trigger to keep the laser on, while I used barely any contact to adjust where the laser was pointing. And after many painstaking attempts, I finally got the shot to work. I decided to try an even more distant shot to see if I could max out the length of the trail that I was on. Now at this point I was shooting from a bit over 200 feet away. Now unfortunately I could not get the laser to pop the balloon from this distance. And this was slightly disappointing because in theory this design should be able to work out to a few times this distance. But in practice my imprecise plastic construction and scattering from air significantly mitigates this. I think it's time to play with some fire. I made some exploding laser targets by binding a mixture of very angry chemicals together with some red gum and acetone. The first shot that I tried was at about 30 feet away. Now even though I knew what I was in for, I couldn't help but be surprised by that flash. When it's close like this, it can ignite the chemicals nearly instantly. Now compared to popping balloons, its ability to light these targets on fire drops off much faster over a distance. And here's the most distant shot that I was able to pull off with the laser. Now I suppose I could have pulled off some longer shots if I used even more unstable chemicals, but I guess I didn't want to test my luck any further. Now the shots that you just saw are the absolute maximum that I could pull off with a gun. It took a lot of attempts to get those really distant shots to work. Now the main limiting thing on this thing is the power output. Like, but if I were to say replace that laser diode in there with like a 10 or 100 watt fiber laser, I think it could do an impressive amount of damage with that. One other thing I'd change is I'd definitely swap out these PVC mounts because it's mainly because the threads on these things, they're just, they're just so coarse. It's, it's hard to do anything fine adjustment when you're trying to focus down range with that. And then obviously I'd definitely swap out the uh, plastic construction on the gun for something metal because the plastic construction is pretty weak. But I mean this was just for demonstration and it was a fun project and, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Now I'd love to give a big thank you to the guys at Esco Optics because not only did they send me the lenses that I use on this laser sniper rifle, but they've given me a bunch of other optics for use in some other experiments that I'm working on, so a big thank you to those guys. Uh, also, I'd really like to thank all my patrons on Patreon because if it wasn't for you guys supporting my videos, I would not be able to afford projects like this, so a big thank you to you guys. In fact, I'm going to let all you guys see this video first before I make it public on YouTube, so just to express my gratitude there. And then, oh yeah, I, uh, you guys should all check out my Instagram account because I actually post a lot of content there, it's just very few of my subscribers follow me there, so there's a link in the description and you all should check that out. And uh, yeah, until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.